Hey, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to go over the PBS uh, displacement material sets. Uh, there are two. There is one for metallic and there is one for specular. Those only matter if you're using um, specular or metallic uh, materials, so I will just be covering metallic today, but feel free to use specular if that's more your jam. First of all, I want to show you what the PBS uh, displacement material usually does, and uh, then we'll talk about how it works and show you some setups using it. So if I go over here into Smooth POV, what I've got here is an icosphere. This comes from the uh, Neos Essentials procedural meshes folder, and it's got a displacement material on it, which is making this effect happen where its triangles are expanding in size and moving outwards from the center here. You'll see when it stops that you'll see the icosphere in the center here, but uh, you know it's expanding outwards. So we're going to recreate this, and then we're also going to apply that to a few more models. Um, Things to note as we go is that uh, this material usually works a lot better if you have a vertex displacement map, we'll talk more about what those are. In lieu of having one of those, low poly models work fantastically because there's usually less data to deal with. I'll uh, show you what I mean as we go. We're going to need a material tooltip for this. There you go. Uh, let me get rid of my, my tooltips. Oh, I don't need mine. There we go. Let's get rid of them. Sometimes my face has extra tools in it. Uh, and we'll need a uh, developer tooltip and a logix tooltip as well. Next thing we'll need is that uh, procedural mesh as I uh, as I explained it. So uh, let me show you what that is. So let me turn on my private UI here, and you'll see that I am in uh, I'm in Neos Essentials, and then I'm going to go to 3D models, uh, procedural meshes, and then inside here should be the icosphere somewhere. Uh, there it is. So this is the icosphere. Um, an icosphere is different from a UV sphere because an icosphere usually uses uh, triangles. It, it stands for ico, like hedron or something like that. Uh, it's a different way of basically making a sphere in 3D. So we're gonna go and open the inspector here to find it within the inspector. And I'm going to go to the icosphere here and I'm gonna drop the uh, subdivisions down to one, which will make it look a lot, uh, a lot more a triangle and then we'll hit flat shading here and then you'll see what we've got here is a, the uh, sphere from the start of the video um, but not animating so you see you know you can see all the triangles this is an icosphere where each each face of the sphere is made out of a triangle whereas the uv sphere uses um uh, quads to make uh, make the sphere shape now that we've got our sphere set up, what we're going to do now is create the material for it. So we're going to use the developer tooltip here. You can also use the material tooltip, but I'll use the developer one here. Open up the context menu, go to create new materials, and then you're looking in the PBS folder, you'll see PBS uh, displace metallic and displace specular here. There is also um, distance lerp or lerp down here, metallic. Um, that is another type of material. I actually have a video on that one. Oh, there it is, distance, uh, distance lerp at the top here. That is another type of material which I have a different video on. These two are often confused, so that's why I'm doing a video on displace. Um, and then I'll link in the video description the one on distance lerp as well. So here, yeah, PBS displace metallic. And then you'll see once that's created that we get a normal material orb for it um, and that there are a number of properties on it. Uh, it is very similar to any other type of material. It can have an elevated texture, emissive, normal maps, occlusion maps, all that sort of jazz. But it can also have what's called a vertex displacement map and a couple of other properties, vertex displacement magnitude and vertex displacement bias. We'll be using the map and the magnitude today just to show you what they do. There's also UV displacement, but I haven't really played around with that a lot. So, um, Let's talk about the vertex displacement map. So the vertex displacement map is a um, black and white image that you need to place in, which controls which vertices on the um, on the mesh will uh, be affected by the displacement where white is be affected and black is do not be affected. So because we want the entire sphere to uh, operate here, what we want is a entirely white image to be inside the vertex displacement map, as this will allow us to um, just turn up private UI. And this will, as this will allow, allow each vertice to be affected the same way. To get a completely white image, we can actually use a procedural um, image. Neos has a few procedural images. They are less varied than the procedural meshes, but uh, this procedural image can be found in Neos Essentials Textures and Sprites Procedural Textures. And inside there, you'll find a solid color texture. So I'm going to spawn that in. Solid color texture is exactly that. It just uh, is a solid color. So I'm going to open this up in the inspector, find this albedo texture, which has a 4x4 four four solid color texture. It's just a white square. And drop that into vertex displacement map. 
Now you'll see that the uh, sphere for the uh, material orb is now very large, and that's because it's being affected by vertex displacement. So I'm just going to move this over here so that it's out of the way. Um, when working with uh, PBS displace, you kind of need to sort of figure out where you're going to place the sphere that uh, represents this mesh, because they get big quite fast. So now that that's created, I'm going to go ahead and take the PBS displace metallic uh, material by grabbing it and dropping it into the mesh render of our icosphere. And now you'll see that we've got these uh, triangles coming out that are being all sort of displaced on the same amount and the same uh, direction, which is the normal of their face. Um, now all we's left to do is to animate this. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my logic tip here. With my logic tip selected, I'm going to walk up to uh, PBS Displays Metallic, grab that, turn to some empty space and hit secondary. This will get us an interface card for the PBS uh, Displays Metallic uh, material. Um, and what we need to do here is change the vertex displaced magnitude. To illustrate this using the editor, I'm going to set the vertex displaced magnitude here to zero, and you'll see that the um, icosphere is back together. If I set it to one, you'll see it's it's quite far apart, but I can also set that to 10, and you'll see that it's very far apart. We actually lost rendering on it because of face settings, um, and the fact that that sphere over there is getting quite big, as I said. Now that we've used that sphere, by the way, we can just go ahead and uh, just shove it more out of the way. I was going to delete it, but that makes it difficult to pack the setup later, so I'm going to just leave that floating there for the moment. So we want a number that goes between uh, 1 and uh, 0, basically. So we're going to use a sine curve for that. Um, I used this in a tutorial on reciprocal motion, um, and so I'll link that one in the video description as well, so you can take a look at that one for some more information. But uh, we'll do it again here, and I'll explain each node as we go. So with the logic tip equipped, we're going to go to the node browser, and we're going to go to input, and we want t. T just counts up um, as session time increases, um, so it's just an always ever increasing number. And then we also want math, sine or sin, which is right at the bottom. Connect the uh, output of T into the input of sine, and then we also need the remap negative 1 uh, to 1 to 0 to 1. This basically smooths out the sine wave so that it's always uh, above the zero line. Um, you can do negative displacements, but for this particular setup it's not what I want, so I'm doing that. And uh, then we can just plug this into Vertex Displace Magnitude, and you'll see that we start getting things going. So you'll see here that the, the sphere is now breathing. As it's a regular material, I'm going to set its color to be um, not white, as we're in a nice cloudy environment. So here we go, here's a nice red. We'll make it a little bit emissive so you can see it a bit better there as well. You'll see there you go, it's breathing in and out. In and out. You can also see the material sphere at the back of there in the distance is also breathing. That's why I pushed it all the way out the back there, just to you know keep it out of the way. We can change the bounds of this from 0 to 1 to, say, 0 to 20 easily by going to Operators, Multiply, and you place the multiplier between the uh, remap node and the, uh, the arrow here. So we just put this into the top of the multiply, and then we have our uh, bounds here. So say we want to go between 0 and 10, we can put 10 there, and then we can connect the output to this arrow. And now you'll see that we've got a lot bigger of a, an effect here. To illustrate that this is a regular material, I'm now going to just spawn a random screenshot from my uh, folder. Uh, I lie, I'm not going to spawn a random screenshot at all. I'm going to spawn my favorite image, which is uh, Trader Joe's light Mexican uh, shredded cheese. And I'm going to go ahead and put that into the ablator texture of this uh, material. And then I'm going to go ahead and knock the uh, texture scale up a little bit. And I'm also going to set the... Uh, color to white and so now you'll see that we've got an ever-expanding um, shredded cheese picture over there the icosphere doesn't really have uh, suitable uvs to show it there but i just wanted to show that the material can have uh, textures on it as that was a request from hamish who actually requested this whole video so thank you for that let me see if i can figure out how to uh Okay, no, the icosphere can't edit the UVs, but if you've got a mesh that you've made in Blender, then you'll have manual UVs anyway. To illustrate that this works for any material, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and apply it to some other materials, uh, not other materials, for other meshes. So over here I have a couple of sort of nature assets from Quaternarius's pack. Uh, um, they're a excellent low-poly 3D modeler who gives away the uh, resources at a permissive license. That's super cool. And thank them for doing that. You can find these resources uh, handily imported by Medra in the Creator Jam public folder under its uh, 3D models uh, 
folder. The interesting part about this one as well is that the tree has a separate material to the trunk, which allows us to only apply our displacement to the tree, which is great. So I'm going to go ahead and inspect the tree here, and I'm going to find the green one, which uh, isn't that one, so it looks like it's the first one. Oh no, it's the second one, sorry. PBS is sometimes difficult to see depending on the lighting systems. So it's the second material, so I'm going to go back over here, grab PBS Displace uh, Metallic, and drop it into the top of the tree here. Onto the second material slot. And now you'll see that the uh, the mesh of the tree is, uh, or just actually, you know, the, the leaves of the tree is now doing the same expanding thing. This also shows the um, problem that you might come across with uh, PBS Displace, which is uh, it displaces along the normal of the uh, face. And so you'll see that some of the, the branch segments here are crossing over each other, and that's because they are sort of facing on top of each other. You can also uh, do this for other models. So I've got here just a cactus. We'll do this one really quickly. Again, I'm going to drop it in there. And now you see that the cactus will unbuild and build itself. It works. It's quite a nice effect, usually. Uh, it does work on the higher poly materials, but that's really, again, if you've got a vertex displacement um, map and a uh, material that's got sort of suitable UVs for it. There you go. That's the PBS at distance. Um, PBS Displace, you may have confusing them. That's the PBS um, Displace Metallic uh, Material Explained. You can find in my public folder under Tutorials, Materials, Displace, you can find the IQSphere that we made over there. Hope that helps. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.